witness this, guys. Three fucking microseconds. This is what the legend said. And the guy who achieved this probably used... Sorry for the messenger noises. Uh, so, I read about... Um, I'm gonna link that uh, post. I read about something on the NVIDIA forums uh, where a guy saw, but he didn't link the source, where a guy saw somebody having three microseconds of uh, DPC latency and he described it as flat as as a lake. So, flatter than a lake. Uh, mine is a little bit fluctuating, but still, most of the time, just three microseconds. And how I achieve this? Well, I've uninstalled the display drivers with DDU, and currently I'm running at 800 by 600. But uh, the DPC latency probably won't change um, if I just set it to 1080p. I mean, it increased a little bit, but I think it will settle back. Yeah, it will settle back. How I achieve this? Well, I'm using, uh, first of all, I'm using uh, the MSI utility, MSI mode utility version 2. You can set your devices in MSI mode throughout the registry. You can, you can find guides for that online. But you also have a utility like this. Sorry for the messenger noises again. So you can just use a utility like this and um, put most of your devices into MSI mode, that is the uh, newer standard for interrupts, message signal interrupts. By default, your most of your devices, like 90% of my devices, aside from the uh, 3.1 and uh, 3.0 USB hub, uh, were using the old uh, mode to handle interrupts, which caused more DPC latency. So just download this. MSI mode utility v2, just google it and uh, set all your devices into MSI mode which you can. Uh, the only device which caused the blue screen if I set it to MSI mode was the SATA controller and that will be probably like that for you as well. Just before starting to experiment with this, with what you can turn uh, into MSI mode and what you cannot make a backup, a system restore point. You can Google how you do that as well. So, MSI mode it is. I've disabled many, many services. This is turning into a guide on how to optimize your PC, but anyway. Uh, I just sorted them by startup type. I mean status, uh, and looked at the one which ones which uh, were started and disabled anything which I don't need, like um, stuff like Bluetooth stuff, adaptive brightness, uh, remote desktop services, um, printer services, um, Windows Defender, that is a big one, and Windows Update. Windows Defender will will just really eat away um, at your resources for no apparent reason. Um, so I disabled every service which I don't need. Um, and also, I put up this. MS config ms config oh, fucking hell and went to services hide all microsoft services and just disabled google update and, and uh, everything i didn't need and then went to startup and again i've disabled everything uh, that i don't need and also, I went into the BIOS, disabled Turbo Boost, every sleep state, um, virtual Intel uh, VTD, HPAT, 
so high precision event timer and the last one I was talking about was virtualization so VTD it's listed like that in my BIOS and you should do all these steps as well um, you should be looking to get a stable voltage on, on your CPU and RAM. I set 1.3 on the CPU and load line calibration to high. And that way, when I monitor, monitor uh, my CPU voltage with a hardware monitor or something like that, uh, I get a stable reading. So it doesn't change even when my CPU is under load. So look at the V core. It's packed at this number. Even when I open up games, it's packed at this number. But I could only achieve this uh, stable uh, voltage with setting the load line calibration to high in the BIOS. And you should experiment with that also. And also, depending on your motherboard, I found 1.3 voltage on my i7-2600 to be stable. Uh, but on your motherboard, some other value might be stable, and this value might not be stable. You have to experiment with it, like pull up hardware monitor, or some other monitoring software, launch up a game, and then check back whether uh, the voltage has changed drastically when your PC got under load, and if it did, then turn up load line calibration to a higher value, or change the V core in the BIOS or do both things. And for the last two things I did to optimize my PC and DPC latency on it is that I had some other devices for which I couldn't find the drivers but my PC is working fine without them, I just disabled them. You, I can re-enable them but I won't. If you have any devices for which you can't find a driver and there's a yellow exclamation mark there just disable them if your pc runs fine without them you don't need anything which you don't use on your pc it just creates extra load and um the other thing i also did was of course a pretty basic thing again i've listed I'm, i mean i mentioned basic things in this video but if you're a complete newbie and you're watching this those are helpful as well those will be helpful as well. Just set the power options to high performance. And if you don't have many options in this menu, uh, Google um, how to enable all options in Windows uh, power management high performance or piece together a Google search from the stuff I've just mentioned. Uh, like how to enable all settings in uh, how to enable all settings in power plan for example. And you're gonna find uh, what you're looking for here eventually. One other thing to add, um, yeah, Shadow Play is really handy for recording gameplay, but if you do enable it, it will increase your DPC latency, and even more so if you uh, enable it, sh enable Shadow Capture. So that means it's constantly recording your gameplay, and you can just press a button to save it. Um, permanently that will increase your DPC latency and any overlay if you're using Steam Origin any overlay will make your game less responsive so disable all of those if you want a more responsive game yeah it's it's um, if you're playing CSGO for example it's more cumbersome to chat with uh, people on Steam if you don't have the overlay enabled but disabling it 
uh, reduces micro stutters and reduces lag overall and strain on your CPU. So, yeah, that's I think that's all I can think of uh, to optimize your PC for the more res- most responsive feel and for the most for the best experience in FPS titles. One more thing I almost forgot, if you're playing online, and everybody's playing online who's watching this video, just Google this TCP optimizer, download it, start it up, click on run, uh, set your uh, maximum download rate here with the slider, click on optimal, and click on apply changes. Let me let me do it for you. You just press OK and restart your PC. And this will make online games more responsive. It might even decrease your ping, but I won't guarantee you that. What I will guarantee you uh, is that this changes uh, the settings in your Ethernet controller. It'll make stuff snappier, I guarantee you that, because the Windows, basic Windows settings are for compatibility. They are for, um, with the basic Ethernet uh, settings that Windows applies, uh, even the oldest PC and even the newest will work, even the shittiest, even the best will work. But this one uh, applies some more optimal settings for modern PCs for online gaming. And you're probably using a relatively modern PC for gaming if you're watching this video. So just do that. You will thank me, I guarantee. And I knew I forgot something. Uh, which is pretty basic and the mainstream uh, tweak to do. Uh, it's mentioned everywhere, but I almost forgot it. CPU core parking. I don't care what you believe in, what anybody told you, what you read on a forum. This is just a simple program which takes minutes to download and you can't do anything wrong with it and you can set everything back to default if you don't like the results. For which the chances are like zero. <laughs> so if you have like any multi core CPU, you can't have negative results from this. The only negative that you get with unparking your cores is higher po- uh, power consumption. But just do it. Uh, you want stable clocks, you want each of your cores to be running at their maximum all the time, or at least running at a set amount. Um, If you have an i5, this might not do anything. Um, I can't remember, I had an i5-2300, what what did it do or what it didn't. But on the i7, I think it made a difference. Anyway, just download this, unpark all of your cores and be done with it. Don't think about it because there's no negatives, basically. If you're going to optimize your PC for FPS gaming, then just do this little step which might help a lot. I think that's all I could remember. I know this this is kind of messy and amateurish, like I'm filming the screen. But I, I really don't have much time to do a video like this, but I, I just thought I'd put, off, put up a video either way, because I, I have the knowledge to help many of you uh, make your PCs uh, feel more responsive, and that way increase the amount of enjoyment you get out of playing FPS games. <laughs>